Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me today to talk about something very near and dear to my heart, the Unified Robotics Innovate for Inclusion Award. I'm super excited that we are launching this award this year during the 2021 Unified Robotics competition. So today I'm going to give you a bit of an overview about the award, what we're looking for um, from schools who are submitting, and a little bit about the information that you will need uh, to actually submit for consideration for this year's Innovate for Inclusion Award. So first of all, the as I said, the this award is being launched this year in the 2021 Unified Robotics Competition. So this is the inaugural year for this. So very special. Um, whoever wins this year will always have a very special place in our hearts as the very first winner of this award. Um, now the Innovate for Inclusion Award shines a light on the essence and purpose of Unified Robotics, which is to foster collaboration among students of all ability levels to achieve excellence together as a unified team. The award will be presented to the school that demonstrates in the most compelling manner how STEM and technology activities such as Unified Robotics have worked to promote inclusion within their school. All right, now at the heart of this is the, con the unified concept, if you will. Um, and the unified concept is based on something called meaningful participation, which means that everybody that is coming together on this team or for this activity um, is being is coming together as equals okay and each person has a meaningful role and an opportunity to contribute his or her strengths to this team or to this group activity okay now i many of you may have already heard my um the illustration that I love uh, for the concept of meaningful participation. And this was a story that came out of the 2019 Unified Robotics Competition. There was a primary school team um, and one of the team members was really, really good at color coding and categorizing all of the Lego bricks that were used to um, build and construct uh, the robots. And some of the, the coding activity was not as interesting to this, uh, this team member, but they were really, really good and very interested at coding the blocks, okay? And so this was their job. And they were very, very good at it. And color coding and categorizing these bricks was something that contributed to the building of this robot and the success of the team. So in other words, it doesn't mean that everybody on your robotics team needs to be able to code, but it means that everybody has a valuable contribution to make. It means that, you know, one member of the team or two members of the team are not sitting by and simply watching or being directed, okay, now, you know, take the red block and put it here. No, it means that you're evaluating everybody's interests and skills and you're finding a way for them all to contribute. So this is super important because here at Special Olympics, everything that we do is to promote inclusion. And when we talk about inclusion, when we talk about unified teams and unified activities, we are talking about meaningful participation, okay? So I wanted to stress that a bit in the beginning. Now, what activities can be considered for the Innovate for Inclusion Award? Now, again, this award is looking for the school that is using STEM-based activities to promote inclusion, all right? So in this case, we're not looking for your football team or your unified arts club. We're looking for STEM-based activities. Um, now, now, one thing we are doing in our inaugural year, normally our Innovate for Inclusion Award, will we will um, accept uh, submissions for activities that have happened in the previous academic year, one year. But because this is our very first uh, Innovate for Inclusion Award, and we want to hear everything 
that you guys have been doing, all the creative projects and programs that you have going on. Um, and because you know we're in the middle of a pandemic when we know everything has been super challenging, we want to make sure that everybody has a chance to submit all of their recent um, activities. So we're accepting any activities held by your school from September of 2019 to March of 2021. And what that means is that Unified Robotics um, 2019 can be included in this award. So if your school participated in the 2019 um, inaugural Special Olympics Unified Robotics Competition, please include that in your submission, um, as well as any other activities you've included. So any technology-based activity is that is unified. So in other words, it does not need to be limited to your unified robotics activities. If you have a unified, um, you know, if you have an esports, for example, team that is unified in your school, then this would count. If you have another type of STEM-based activity, if it's coding, if it's something um, computer-based, if it's a Mindstorm uh, club that is unified, then this can be um, included. So it doesn't need to be uh, just unified robotics. We want to know what creative ideas um, you guys are implementing in your schools. Now. We have all had an exceptionally challenging and unique year, and no one has had a more challenging or unique year than teachers and students. Um, and obviously, we have all been exploring all kinds of online activities. So we also can consider uh, virtual activities that you all may have implemented um, in your schools as part of the pandemic that might not be centered on a STEM activity, but they are utilizing technology to, to um, create that unified experience. Now, I want to be very clear on what will be considered and will not be considered. So it means that the technology is actually utilizing a unified activity, okay? So, for example, if your school is running um, PE in which you have uh, a teacher who's leading online and they're running through a fitness routine and you have students that are tuning in to this class that are neurodiverse. So you may have a mix of students who are neurodiverse and mainstream students that are tuning into a virtual PE class or um, something. But if they're just tuning in, that is not a unified activity, okay? So unified does not simply mean that neurodiverse students are participating or are, you know, in that environment. It means that there is active engagement between the students, neurodiverse students, and their mainstream peers. So if that PE class involved, let's say, breakout rooms, where students with and without um, intellectual disabilities or developmental disabilities were working together to create fitness routines themselves and then share those with the class, that would be an example of utilizing technology for a unified activity because you're using Teams or you're using Zoom, you're using those breakout rooms um, to create a, an environment for engagement, and then they are presenting um, those routines that they have worked together uh, to their classmates. Okay, so that would be unified. But simply having um, a teacher present to a group of students who are uh, neurodiverse and mainstream does not constitute unified. Um, because if there's not that collaboration between the students, then it is not a unified activity. And we'll be looking very, very closely for this, okay? Um, so again, anything that you've done, if let's say, for example, you have a, uh, I have heard of a few schools that have been really creative and they have like buddy programs. So, and they have adopted those to the virtual space. So if you have students who are neurodiverse and students who are mainstream students 
who are meeting up online for the purpose of, let's say, a homework buddy. Like, you know, maybe your students are coming together and saying, oh, let's do our homework together. Or you have students that are um, checking in with their peers uh, virtually, like for social, just to chat with them and see how they're doing and maybe play a, a game online together or watch something online just to have that social connection. If that is unified, if that's happening between students with intellectual disabilities or developmental disabilities and mainstream peers, and it is happening um, utilizing online technology, then that could be considered for uh, the Innovate for Inclusion Award. Okay, so I'm sorry, I, I may have beat this point to death, but I wanted to be really, really clear because these are some of the misconceptions um, that we uh, get questioned about from schools. Okay, so what exactly is the information that we are going to ask you for? All right, so first of all, we're going to need a little bit of information about your school, your school's name. Um, for example, if you're part of a larger educational um, company, like let's say the Gyms Network, um, we want to know that you're part of this Gyms Network. Are you a school um, under uh, Talim Education? Are you a school under the Emirates National um, uh, Company or umbrella? Then we, we would like to know that. Um, the curriculum. Are you MOE curriculum? Are you American curriculum? Are you IB curriculum? Are you Indian curriculum? Um, for example, okay? We wanna know the grade range. So does your school have students from KG um, up until grade 12? Do you uh, have like KG up until grade six? Uh, do you have only grades like nine to 12? We just wanna get a feel for um, which, what students you have in your school as well as the student population. Um, and this just helps us uh, interpret the activities that you send in. So for example, if you have a school of 4,000 students and your submission is solely covering two students, the same two students over and over again, then um, you know that paints one picture. But if you're a school of a few hundred and you are, um, showcasing and highlighting the same two or three students over and over again, that is a different, um, you know, a different interpretation. Uh, you know, we can make some rough estimates on the number of, um, you know, neurodiverse students versus uh, uh, mainstream students in your school. So we just like to get a feel if we're talking about a school of a few hundred or several thousand. Okay, the Emirate, the address, we want to know your principal's contact, and we want to know the person who is going to be the point of communication for the Innovate for Inclusion Award. So that may not be, uh, if you're involved in unified robotics, it may not be your unified robotics point of contact, it's maybe someone different, um, and that's fine. So we just want to know who exactly to direct our communications to. Now, in terms of programming, what are you going to be submitting to us? So, unified STEM programs. So you can submit as few or as many as you have to submit, right? So um, you can submit only one unified STEM activity. Now, let me be clear, it, you don't necessarily get more points for more programs, okay? We're really looking for the depth of impact. Um, and we're looking for how deeply you've impacted not only the students that are involved, but the school community, okay? So if your school has had a deep impact with one project of seven or eight children, um, students, then that, you know, that school may win the Innovate for Inclusion Award, um, as opposed to a school that maybe submits 10 programs and none of them are really unified and there hasn't been a big impact in the school and we don't see a big you know change these are just things that you've kind of done to tick a box this is not going to be um you know carry as much weight so again we're really looking for the creativity and the depth of impact the sustainability for example how long has this program been going on how long will it go on for do you have a plan 
to sustain this program? Is this program simply um, the result of one student who might graduate next year and nothing will be left? Or is this something that is involving, um, you know, a department head and a student organization and, um, you know, it has legs. Uh, and it has a system and an ecosystem within your school. These are the things we're looking for. Okay, so you submit your unified STEM programs. If that's one, if that's, you know, three, that's fine. Then um, unified STEM leadership. So what is unified STEM leadership? This simply means that your unified STEM activity is student driven. So in other words, if you have a unified, um, if your unified robotics competition team is being uh, mentored by a senior student or a group of senior students, then that is a STEM leadership activity, okay? Because those student leaders are organizing the team. They are, uh, you know, giving input, they're mentoring them. They're supporting them, they're organizing it, they're creating the agendas, they're creating the schedules, they are leading um, that program. So that's a student-led program and that would be a, a unified STEM leadership program. If your school has a unified robotics club year round, okay, is that teacher driven or is that student driven? So obviously you would have a teacher mentor, but are if you have students that are again, um, leading, creating the agenda, creating the content, communicating with other students, recruiting other members, then that is a student lead, student led club, and that would be a unified uh, STEM leadership opportunity. Um, and again, if your school, if nothing that you're doing is student led, that's fine. Okay, um, you don't need to have a STEM leadership uh, activity. But if you do, we want that sort of entered uh, separately. Now, whole school engagement. Those of you that are familiar with the Unified Champion School Program know that we are basically following the pillars of the uh, UCS uh, criteria with this awarding. And the whole school engagement is really meant to help you as a school Take the great work that you're doing with your unified clubs or your unified activities and start, create momentum within your school. Create sort of a momentum for inclusion. So in other words, let's say your school, this is the first time you're, you're, you're doing a uh, unified program and you have your unified robotics team and this is four kids. Okay, this is incredible. You're impacting for the lives of four students, um, their teachers, and their families. So this is a great step, all right? And if you just do that, you're having good impact. But what if you created a way to help your school learn more about this club and what's happening, to spread the message of inclusion and spread the message um, of unified programming? So how could you do this? Well, for example, as part of the Unified Robotics Program this year competition, we have an award for virtual fans in the stands. And what fans in the stands does is bring together um, the school community to encourage that team, okay? And by doing that, you're spreading the message. You're getting other people involved. Um, that may be like, let's say your robotics team is in the secondary school. Maybe you're, you know, engaging, um, first of all, different grades. You're involving maybe the administration. You can involve your receptionist. Let her cheer for your team. You might be involving parents. You might be involving your school government. Um, you know, go to your class presidents and say, hey, we want to do you know, we want to cheer on our unified robotics team and we want to get you guys involved in fans in the stands. Um, they don't need to be involved with the team, but they can be involved in spreading that message and um, supporting that team. And part of the reason that fans in the stands is so important to us is because it's a really fun way to spread that message around the school. Because, you know, who doesn't want to like cheer for one of your school teams? 
You know, if you ask someone, they're never going to say no. And you're going to tell them about it, right? Maybe they would never have heard about your unified robotics team, but now they know. All right. So that's the point. Now, some schools that competed in 2019, and perhaps this is something that some schools can even do in 2021, is they created like a bulletin board in support of their unified team. Okay. Or they would mention it in a school assembly, or maybe have one of the students that's involved present it in a school assembly and say, hey, this is what we're doing in Unified Robotics, and we want you guys to be cheering us on on our competition day on March 13th or March 30th or what have you. Okay, so by presenting that in a school assembly, that is engaging the entire school network. So who's listening to that assembly? Your administration, your teachers, your students. Um, and they're all learning about this through this presentation um, in your school assembly. So those are examples of whole school engagement. Um, there's many others. I mean, anything that spreads that message across your school is a whole school engagement. Now, again, if you do not have a STEM based whole school engagement, that's fine. It is not necessary um, to have one in order to submit for the Innovate for Inclusion Award. But if you have completed a whole school engagement, we'd like you to submit that separately um, and highlight it a bit, if you will. Now, each of these, um, each of the uh, programs, each of these that you submit for, you're going to need to have three pieces of supporting documentation. You're going to need to have an overview with dates and numbers. So in other words, if you are going to submit um, a school assembly where you presented the unified robotics team and um, you know gathered uh, support for that team then we need to know what was the date okay and how many students were involved how many students were involved in the presentation how many students were were there to hear about it um, how many teachers supported that presentation um, you know, did someone introduce the team? Did someone mentor the team on the presentation? Uh, we want to know who was involved. Okay, if it's a club, then we want to know that you meet on a weekly basis on Tuesdays at this time, and it's been ongoing since this date until this date. Um, and we want to know how many students. So we have an average number of five students in this uh, unified club. And over the course of a year, we have engaged 15 different students with average participation being seven um, at each club meeting, like that, okay? Um, we want impact stories. So we love impact stories at Special Olympics uh, UAE and Special Olympics International because stories really do an excellent job of illustrating. So we, we take dates and numbers, but what do we all care about? We care about the people involved. Um, I told you a story about, you know, one of the unified robotics team members who loved to uh, color code and categorize bricks, okay? That's a story. I told you a story that I think will probably stick in your head much better than me just telling you everyone needs to have a job on this on a unified team, right? And so we want to hear your impact stories, and we want to because we want to be able to share these and really spread the good work that you're doing in your schools. And then media, and we'll talk about this in just a minute. Um, but again, you can enter as many programs, leadership opportunities, and whole school engagement as you wish. All right, now involve everyone. So when it comes to impact, again, as I said in the beginning, we're really looking at what is the impact of what you are um, implementing. So if it's a unified robotics team, okay, maybe you say, I have you know 60 students from my school signed up for unified robotics. That's great. But what's the impact on all of those students? How many teachers are involved with those teams? How many family members um, can share stories about what's happening? So in other words, what, what's the depth of this program and what, what is its impact? Because 
one or two students that are impacted deeply and in a meaningful way will carry that message of inclusion much farther than 25 students who were just superficially involved. So that's where the impact stories really illustrate and sort of flesh out these numbers and dates. So we can be really interested in this program can sound great, or by contrast, it can be a very small program that sounds boring, but when we hear how it impacts the participants and the community, that is how we can really, really see the effect that this is having in the community. So in other words, we know that the students that are involved will be ob obvious choices for impact stories, right? Your neurodiverse students, your unified partners, we wanna hear from both of them. But think also as well, teachers. So what sort of impact do the teachers see? Because what is really interesting about some unified uh, programs is we hear from schools you know, we started this unified football football after school and, you know, we've been doing it for three or four weeks and, you know, it seems fun. But then we started to notice that, you know, the students were together more at recess, that maybe some of the students that were often alone at recess didn't have friends. All of a sudden they were being asked to play, you know, games or they were sitting at lunch with new people because um, these were connections that were made through this unified activity. Maybe you see an increase in um, kids helping each other during class. Maybe you see uh, that type of impact. So we want to hear that from, from teachers. What are you seeing? What do you see as a result? Not just what's happening. We're bringing them together, you know, once a week to work on their robotics teams. What's happening outside of that? Those, those types of stories really, really illustrate the power of unified activities, okay? Families as well, okay? This is another thing that we hear over and over and over again from families, not only of our neurodiverse athletes, but also of unified partners. We hear from parents who say, of unified partners who say, wow, you know, I have really noticed my son or daughter like has changed since they've been playing, um, let's say unified football. And I actually had a mother who told me that they, she really felt that her son um, over the course of about six or nine months that he was playing on this unified team, she said, I started to notice that he really was a little more empathetic toward everybody. You know, toward his sister, towards his family. Um, I noticed him just being a, a bit kinder and gentler, if you will. Um, and she really attributed this to being in, in, in this unified environment in which sort of looking for everybody's strengths and seeing the best in, in each other um, and, and people of different abilities coming together for a common purpose. She really felt that this had had a positive impact. Um, if simply their child's talking about it a lot and they see them being excited, whatever they see, if they see their child engaging in new activities, whatever it is, it doesn't have to be so dramatic as becoming a kinder and gentler teenager. Um, any impact that they have, we want to hear these stories. So everyone is involved. Everyone has an impact story. Now we will help you construct these stories by creating a framework. So along with your submission package, you will have a section called the story, story starter. And again, these are all suggestions. Your story does not need to be a formula. Be as creative as you want, include what, what's important to you, what you see is important. But we provided the guidelines because the feedback that we get a lot is, I don't know what to say, I don't know where to start. Um, so we've given you this as sort of a launch pad. Um, so look for that in your uh, in your um, submission package. Now, I will say, honestly, the more uh, impact stories that we receive from a school, obviously that is going to play uh, a large role in, you know, the impact that we see in your program. So the more impact stories you can collect, obviously, the better. But again, quality over quantity. So if we get from your school three incredible impact stories from three different uh, angles, let's say, 
then that is going to carry a lot more weight than um, you know seven or eight impact stories all from unified partners and all said I loved this activity or I loved unified robotics that doesn't tell us much okay so again really looking for uh, stories that show impact all right obviously we would like um, to have media submitted uh, as part of your documentation for your programs and stories a picture is worth a thousand words so if you can attach an image to your impact stories that goes a long way um, but we understand that you know this is a difficult time and collecting uh, getting people in the same space is difficult so again you're welcome to be creative so videos do not need to be traditional videos where you shoot uh, two students sitting together or working together okay but when when our like for example in unified robotics when our students are working together on the platforms that you know they're coming together maybe weekly uh, in, in most cases as a team they can record their screens for example with their robots moving and their voices can be heard all right that's fine um, if you have students that are on zoom together you know, you can record a little bit of that Zoom conversation or take a screenshot. That's absolutely fine. Um, some students may not want their faces shown, in which case they could, for example, send a voice note in telling a story or, um, you know, recalling events. That is absolutely fine. And important, important to point out, I think everyone knows this, but phones can do it all. You don't need any special equipment. It doesn't matter if you're working from home, teaching from home, learning from home. We, we pretty much all have you know, the availability within our households to a phone, which can do voice notes, which can take pictures, and which can do videos. Um, so obviously in your submission package, we'll give you a little helpful hints on taking the best media possible, but I think you know, we all know how to do that. Now, in terms of you know videos we talked about it um, with bands in the stands that's going to be a produced video if you enter that category um, we've asked for media obviously if you have a student or you yourself are great at film editing and you want to put together an oscar worthy um, documentary on your school's uh, inclusion efforts then by all means, we would love to receive that. But if you are someone who doesn't feel confident editing a video, uh, all the students that are good at that are busy with other things, um, you just don't have time, it's just not something that's interesting to you, that is fine. Do not feel pressure to produce a movie. Raw footage is absolutely fine. Um, so please don't be intimidated by feeling that you have to put up, put in a big, uh, you know, audio visual, um, effort on this. This can simply be raw footage. All right. And, and the last thing is simply that any images or voices, if it's a voice recording or videos that you submit, um, please ensure that there is photo consent for social media and media usage. Um, because anything that you send in to us, you know, will be shared internally as a team and could be used in uh, on social media or uh, for media usage. Now, if for some reason you have a large group of students who, you know, do not uh, wish to have, um, you know, their images shared on social media, but you want to submit them for internal review, please make a note of that. Um, and those will only be seen uh, amongst the judging panel, and then they will be, um, you know, deleted or edited so that uh, faces and identities are not not known. Okay. Um, all right. So the submission deadline is March twentieth, twenty twenty one, four p.m. So at four, anything received after that, unfortunately, will not be able to be considered. So. You know, we have a good amount of time. We have a month to get this all together and uh, we are here to help you. If you have any questions, um, please get in touch. 
Now, all Unified Robotics registered coaches will receive a submission package before March 1st, all right? But if you've not received one um, or you want one sent directly to you and you're not a registered coach, please send um, an email to unified.robotics at specialolympics.ae and I will be sure to get one of those packages to you. Thank you again for joining us and we look forward to your submissions.